Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're doing great today. I have a tutorial based on my last one, which was caching dynamic simulations. And this time I want to talk to you about emitters. So if you haven't used emitters before, you just go to simulate uh, particles and emitter. And you can go ahead and change your birth rate editor, your different lifetime and speed and all that kind of stuff. And it's going to really quickly generate different particles. And if you want to put geometry on these guys, all you have to do is drop something into your emitter. And if you go to the emitter, you have to make sure you check on show objects. That's off by default. So check that on. And then everything is working properly. You can use this to have pieces of paper flying across the scene or confetti or different things like that. The problem uh, with this setup is that if we scrub it, you can already see that we have a lot of inconsistent results. So if we scrub it and want to know exactly what's going on, um, it's kind of impossible to do that. And if you're going to render this on multiple machines, or if you have to stop and start your renders, you might have some glitches or problems. So just like the dynamics, we want to be able to cache this so that we can scrub through it and everything's going to render properly. So if you're beginning, you might right click and go through these different tags and try to find a cache tag because the emitter itself does not have any caching options. So if we right click and look through all these, you might go to the MoGraph cache tag and say that might work and you might hit bake and nothing happens. That's because this does not recognize the emitter as a MoGraph family. So I don't think you can actually get to the tag from this menu. You might be able to, I didn't see it. But if you go to simulate and then go to particles, right at the bottom we have this bake particles tag. So if we click on that guy, we'll get a little pop-up dialog. And if we hit OK, we will include the sub objects. And already it's cached. It's very, very quick. And you can see that we have this little cache tag on here. So now if we scrub through, we can know exactly what's going on and everything is behaving properly. The problem with this is um, there's a little bit less uh, flexibility and options. Um, you'll notice that if we start at frame zero, uh, there's no particles. But what happens if we want to render at frame zero but already have a bunch of particles born? We can't really do that this way. So we're going to do it a different way. We're going to use the MoGraph cloner. So let's add one of those. Let's take that plane out of the emitter and let's put it inside of the cloner. And let's change the cloner from linear to object. And then we unlock this object slot, which we'll drag the emitter into. And now if we go ahead and hit play, you'll notice that every single particle has a plane cloned to it. So it's basically the same thing, except for now we have unlocked the uh, MoGraph cache tag because this cloner is part of the MoGraph family. So if we set it up this way, we can use that MoGraph cache tag, hit bake, and we're going to be able to bake this simulation. Now we can actually turn off that emitter because it's already baked in there. And you can see that we have everything playing just the way we would. All right, so now that we have all this set up, we have unlocked the offset. So if we want this to start a little bit ahead of time, let's say 100 frames or so before uh, zero. So by the time you start your render at frame zero, they'll already be born and have filled in that black space. So you can kind of not have that awkward spot in the beginning where they're sort of popping on and being born, but they're already filling up the screen. So those are two different ways that you can bake your particles. Personally, I use the cloner way a lot more because then you can unlock uh, you know, a lot of those effectors that you can use in the cloner. Just a few more options inside of your MoGraph cache tag as well, like that offset. So that's the way I set it up. But those are the two different ways you can cache your particles. And I hope that helps you guys out. Thanks again for checking out the Pixlab. We'll talk to you next time. Ciao.